Low-cost multipath ECMP, also called load balancing, enables traffic destined to the same destination prefix to travel over paths with equal costs, allowing the use of redundant paths simultaneously. There are two types of load balancing methods, including per packet flow and per flow. So the first one we're going to look at, per packet load balancing. Although this does a better job actually of equally distributing the traffic across the links, it may actually affect network performance. Take a look at the following network topology. We have R1 and R2 with hosts A, B and C connected. Host A is sending traffic to both host B and C using per packet load balancing. Now, because of factors like packet size or transmission quality across the link, then the packet sent might arrive out of order and the receiving device might have to try and reorder the packets or even request that the information is resent. Luckily for us, Juniper devices don't use per packet load balancing. Then we have per flow load balancing, which classifies traffic based on certain criteria, such as traffic that enters the same ingress interface, or traffic that has the same source and destination address, or which uses the same protocol. Packets that belong to the same flow go over the same link. So in our example here, host A again is sending traffic to host B and host C, and we see that the traffic destined for host B goes over our top path via our XE00 interface, whereas traffic destined for host C follows the bottom path. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing as 86% of viewers aren't currently subscribed. And when it comes to IGPs like ISIS or OSPF, even if there are equal cost paths, the IGP will just choose one of the paths to send traffic over. But this default behavior can be changed with routing policy so that the IGP utilizes equal cost multipath or load balancing. Finally, if you want the flow to include IP layer 4 source and destination ports, such as UDP or TCP information, along with the default layer 3 parameters, you're going to have to configure the hash key accordingly under the edit forwarding options section. So let's take a look at the diagram that we're going to be using for the lab portion of this. And here we have um, R1, R2, and R3. And actually, all we're going to probably be using here is R2. All of the intelligence will be performed on R2. And we're going to try and load balance the traffic from R2 trying to get to R1's loopback. So let's open up R2. And here we have R2. And let's just see if we've actually currently got a route to R1's loopback. which we do, and we can see that we've got two next hops to um, 1.1.1.1, and the first is via GE000.0, .0, which is the bottom path. Actually, I've got those two paths the wrong way around, but that, that's not important. Basically, we know that we've got two next hops across to R1, and what we could also do, we could check the forwarding table, And in the forwarding table, we can see that we're only using the 000 path to get to R1. So we want to change this around. We want to actually make sure that when we are forwarding packets to R1's loopback, that we are, we are using both links. Now to do this, it should be straightforward. We're just going to edit policy options. Let's make a policy statement. We're going to call this load balance to R1's loopback. And then what I'm going to say is from this particular route, let's say root filter, 1.1.1 slash 32 exact, because this is the route that we have in the root table. set then load balance and this next part is the most confusing thing I've seen on 
Juniper. Now we know that Juniper don't do per packet load balancing, but when I do a question mark, it only gives me the options of consistent hash and per packet. Now in this situation, per packet actually means per flow. If anybody else could give me a better explanation than that, then I'm happy to hear it. But we know that um, Juniper doesn't permit per packet. So all I could explain is that here per packet actually means per flow. That's the most confusing thing I've seen on Juniper so far. Lots more confusing things to come, I'm sure. So let's say set then load balance per packet. Then we go to the top and edit the routing options. And we're just going to apply that policy. So let's say set forwarding table and we're going to export the policy which is called load balance and that should be it let's commit that now when we do a run show root for 1.1.1.1 we can see that nothing here has changed and this isn't a problem because we're actually not expecting anything here to change what we are expecting to change is the actual forwarding table when we do a run show root for the forwarding table, this time instead of doing a match, we're going to do a find 1.1.1.1. Oh, sorry, let me pipe that first. And here at the top now, we can see that we have both routes installed in the forwarding table using both interfaces. And as simple as that, we now know that um, for the 1.1.1.1 slash 32 route, we're using load balancing. That's it for this lab. Let's move on to the next one.